Booker T didn't dig his TNA run, sucker. In fact, he's doubled down. He's went one further. Booker T admits that he's ashamed of some of the stuff he did in TNA. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Strong words here for Booker T. I cannot believe that Booker T's came out and basically just thrown his TNA run under the bus. I thought TNA was great in this period, but obviously Booker T doesn't think so because he's came out. No. He's came out and said that he is ashamed of some of the things that he did in TNA. He spoke about when he left WWE, he said that he had no intentions of going back to the company. He thought he was done. He would never be in WWE again, nor did he want to go back. So, I mean, that was pretty much it. Then he spoke on his TNA tenure, and this is what Booker had to say about it. Quote, it was just something that I was trying my best to entertain myself in TNA. When I got to TNA, I had really high hopes to really, really be able to capture some moments in that company. And after about two weeks, I realised that none of that was going to happen. So I just started acting a fool. I really did. I really started acting a fool. I'm actually ashamed of myself for some of the stuff I did in TNA. I really am. Because I knew it wasn't going anywhere, and I lost my seal for really going out and performing the way I think I always had before that. I lost my motivation. I had a two-year contract. I lost my motivation. I'd been watching Last Dance. I'm at the episode nine, and to watch Michael Jordan's drive, he was like a tyrant. He wanted nothing but the best from the guys that were around him. I know when I went to TNA, I felt I had some of that same feeling as far as I'm going to push these guys to really see exactly how far they can go because I knew I had some young talent that I could really really go out there and maybe create some magic with then when none of that happened I lost my passion just because I knew it was out of my hands it was out of my control there was nothing I could do with it I was nowhere near that circle of people that was running it or anything like that so I literally just said man I'm going to come pick up my check I'm going to come try and have some fun and try and create something at the same time and when these two years are over we'll move on end of quote that's booker and that is his um that's his take on what happened in tna and actually i'm gonna have to say i think booker t is trying to pass the buck here in my opinion i think he's right though i feel like no i feel it's, it was great but it was I, a fucking piss it, take. It, no, it was a piss take, but, it was but so good. I think the Booker, the way Booker has worded this is like he wanted to go and make something really good of his run in TNA and he wanted to work with the young guys and create magic, but it was out of his hands and when he realised he wasn't going to be allowed to do that, he decided, well, you know what, I'm just going to mess around and take the piss. That's what it sounds like here. But Kurt, um, but, like, Kurt Angle and Booker, similar age. They were, Kurt Angle was allowed to do that. Why was Booker not... If Booker went to the higher ups, he would have been allowed to. I think so. I, I, I'm, I'm not buying this here. After two weeks, I realised I was going to be doing commentary with fucking Kevin Nash called Black Snow. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. I think Booker T's passing the buck here. Yeah, he, he I think he's trying to blame the company. He's trying to blame the writing. He's trying to blame creative. I don't think it's necessarily their fault. I mean, Booker T's a man. I'm sure he could have... If he wanted to do something, if he wanted to work with a certain talent, if he if he's seen a young guy with potential, I'm sure Booker could have went, like... If I want to work with Alex Shelley, I'm going to work with Alex Shelley, brother. Exactly, but, I mean, Booker T was too busy, you know, doing commentary with Kevin Ash and having the Legends Championship. And you know what? I mean, I've, I've nothing against that. I thought it was a really good run. I enjoyed it. I think the main event mafia was fantastic. I, I would actually genuinely go and saying that they're probably a top 10 stable. Yeah, I'd say so. And let's be honest, there's not many stables that you'd put in the top 10 outside of WCW or, or WWE, but I think the Main Event Mafia are one of those rare ones that Sneak actually in. do get in to the top 10. I mean, you look at it as a stable full of world champions, and it was a good run. You had the Main Event Mafia versus the originals, ah, and I, I enjoyed Booker T's run in TNA. Although I, I I do think at times like he would just show up and act totally like the black snow thing, him talking in all these like accents is like what the fuck was that all about? Ooh, God. It so, was brilliant. It was it was brilliant, but obviously Booker T didn't like it. And I mean, we had some something similar to Ric Flair. Ric Flair before he went to TNA was bashing TNA. Anytime somebody asked him a question on TNA, he would reply, "What's TNA?" But then Ric Flair certainly knew what TNA was when they were paying him a lot of money to come and, you know, be on their show for two years or whatever. And then when Ric Flair left TNA, he pretty much wasted no time in burying the company and saying how he regrets it and how he doesn't want to do it anymore and that he wish he'd never done it. 
I think it's a bit player, pick up, pick up, pick a side. I just think it's a bit cheap that TNA has gave these guys something to do. They've gave them an alternative after their WWE careers appear to be over, and it's like once they leave TNA. The, the, like the, they show no respect, they show no gratitude. They just bury the company. Maybe if Booker T didn't enjoy his run, if Ric Flair didn't enjoy his run, then maybe they need to look in the mirror. Yeah, no, that, well that's it. And you know, the, I wonder was it was it really not, is, he, like, is he burying his latter stages his WWE career because he wasn't doing nothing? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I'd argue his TNA run. I think his TNA run was better than that short stint that he had on Raw. Easily, easily after they got moved in the draft so yeah um again rick flair him r running about in his fucking underpants blading every single week with jay lethal was that tna forcing him to do that or was rick flair wanting to That's do that thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so again i mean look at rick flair the guys never wanted to stop i mean was it really everything rick flair done in tna who's to who's to blame for it Ric Flair, the nature boy. I highly doubt Dixie Carter, Dixie Carter pointed a gun at Flair and went, here, you need to go out in your grandfather pants and fucking bleed here. You're tighty older whities. Yeah, you're tighter whities or, or else you're getting sacked. You know what I mean? Ric Flair was probably begging Dixie. Put me in a match, Dixie. <gasps> Woo! Anyway, guys, Booker T, ashamed of his run. I enjoyed this run. I really enjoyed it. TNA back then was a fucking good alternative, man. It was actually, a, it was the second best company, but it was worthy of being the second best company. Now AEW is the second best company by default and it's absolutely pish. Back then TNA was great. TNA. TNA crossed the line. Alex Shelley, new world champ. Ah oh, yeah, about that. That's fucking horrendous. Anyway guys, till next time. Woo. Peace.